Welcome. We'll start with the expected questions for computers, IT, and we have also included geography in this section. So in this class, we would be covering the recent happenings in the field of computers, IT, as well as geography. Before we start with this, I have few little informations for you. We are now available on uh, Telegram. So if you want to join us on Telegram, you can definitely uh, log in and join us on Telegram. We have the post in the community where you have the link to join. Now, uh, talking about the recent developments in the field of computers and geography, few important things and few important topics on which we have covered separate videos. Those are bitcoins, digital reforms. So these have been covered separately. Then you have the Oki cyclone, the naming of the cyclone, the blue economy and the ocean economy. So these four are the important videos that we have already covered and you should and you must refer it so as to have a clear understanding of what we would be discussing today. Let's start with the first topic today. So we had a summit which was known as Vivid that it's weaving a digital India at the India Habitat Center. The theme was cybersecurity and innovation. So as we said, we are moving into a phase of digital India. And when we are moving into a phase of digital India, cyber issues and cyber security become a major concern. So we will definitely have to work around that based on which we had the conference that took place, which was weaving a digital India. The next is World Information Technology Congress 2018. This was held in uh, Hyderabad in Telangana. And this is the first time that India has hosted the World Information Technology Congress. And therefore, it becomes very, very important. Now, Asta and Aza have a question about research aptitude. So definitely, we'll bring in a live event after your prelims examination. Uh, that's 3rd June. And we would have a live class where we would understand how to solve questions on research aptitude. So you can definitely join us you would have the events uh, update which, which would be available at the web page the next is e sampark very very important certain efforts have been taken by the government to connect with the citizens directly and e sampark e basically means electronic and sampark means connecting so e sampark basically means government is trying to connect to the citizens directly. It's through the outbound uh, mailer services, through the running mailers, the SMS campa campaigns, uh, uh, email mailers and so on. So all those are the mechanism through which government is trying to connect directly to the people to look into the problems and work around those problems. So those are something uh, that have been discussed under e -Sampark. Cyber Dost, very, very important. Cyber Dost is basically a cyber crime prevention scheme against women and children. So basically, uh, all kinds of crime against women and children would be considered uh, under Cyber Dost. And this is one of the major platforms that government has come up with to curb the issues of cyber crime. The next is new data transfer uh, records have been created using quantum computing. In the last class, we have talked about qubits, which are the units for quantum computing. So under qubits, we also have the super dense coding, uh, which has been a method of transferring of information uh, through this method. And this is a process which would basically use three important elements. That's the photons, protons, and electrons. And therefore, this could be one of the direct question, which of the following is not used in the super dense uh, uh, coding system. So super dense coding system basically uses photons, protons, and electrons. That's the important thing that we need to know. Now the next is uh, the next is we have the world's first IBM PC virus that was released back in 1986. It was in the name of Brain. So the name itself is confusing. The name does not appear to be a name of virus. So you have to be very sure while marking the answers. So this virus was discovered in Lahore for the first time, and slowly and gradually it spread to the government offices in Canada and finally throughout the globe. And it was from there you had the, uh, the idea of viruses that spread up. Uh, the first infection was through the floppy drive. So that's something important to know. The next is new Azure. That's the migration tool that has been launched by Microsoft. Now this can be a kind of direct question. Uh, what is the tool that has been launched by Microsoft? Now, uh, 
Aiza has a question about the name of the telegram channel. Yeah, the name of the telegram channel is exam underscore race. So you would have that in the community. So if you are following the exam race videos, you would find that in the community section. Now, uh, Microsoft New Azure basically helps the organization to use the power of hybrid clouding system. And with this hybrid cloud environment, the computing becomes much more easier. There could be a kind of public crowd, uh, cloud, private cloud and so on, or a mix cloud wherever required. So Azure has been a new venture in this and is important. Now e-governance, it's here that we have discussed about the various digital reforms, a totally separate lecture where we have talked about all the government initiatives for e-reforms, digital reforms. So those are important, don't miss out those. Now e-governance basically again means electronic governance. So when we talk about governance, we bring in the concept of art as I had talked to you before, that's the accountability, responsibility and transparency. So with these three motives, we are trying to bring an electronic version into it. And once we have a kind of electronic governance, it would be more streamlined. So let's say filing of the property tax, filing of the taxes for the municipality, for the different bodies could be done through electronic means. And it could make the system much more streamlined. The, uh, the inbuilt corruption could be reduced. So those are the things that we need to work around. The next is Meghraj, very, very important. What is Meghraj could be a direct question. Now Meghraj is a cloud computing service which provides a new model for uh, users and it is launched by the government of India. So cloud computing is one of the major initiatives that the government is working for. So Meghraj would basically provide four uh, platforms. It would be platform as a service, infrastructure as a service, software as a service, and finally storage as a service. So these four uh, services would be provided by Meghraj. Sometimes there could be a direct question which of the following is not a service that could be provided by Meghraj. So these are the questions that you need to keep in mind while uh, studying the questions or studying the content for your prelims examination specifically. Right now we are exclusively focusing on prelims. With just few days left in hand, we are trying to cover up as many important aspects as possible. The next is Sevottam service, Sevo plus Uttam. So basically uh, best or excellence in service, that's the name from which it could be derived and it's service excellence. So service excellence basically is a kind of assessment improvement model where we try to assess uh, the standards of the uh, services that are being delivered and then try to improve the public services based on that. So that's what is the Sevottam service uh, delivery excellence model that has been developed. The next is white paper on data protection framework. Now when we talk about the global digital data, it is believed by 2020 the total data would reach 44 zettabytes, that's a kind of pretty huge amount to uh, compile that kind of data to have a kind of framework to maintain that kind of data you would have the various parameters that would be required and data product protection would be one of the major parameters that you would require there so now Ajay has a question uh, about class in Hindi so the class in Hindi would start at 12 so after that you can join that the next is e-procurement uh, e platform has now started for two states that's Andhra Pradesh and Telangana and it has the goal of caring governance so government is trying to reach out to the people to procure uh, so as to save the time and the cost of the persons involved and this procurement would make would benefit in two ways first of all it would streamline the things and secondly it would provide the best rate to the producer so the vendors would get the best rate out of it and that's what is the e-procurement portal and it could be done through the electronic platform there is no requirement for a middleman the next is MCA 21 now this has been launched by Ministry of Corporate Affairs it's a kind of easy secure online access to the various projects which can be registered at the Corporate Affairs Ministry Khajane project as the name suggests this is an online project to maintain the treasury so computerization of the treasury would be done through this project by government of Karnataka so state bound project relating to the state of Karnataka so sometimes that could also be the question and you can definitely work around that so that's again important the next is 
all the land records are now being asked to get computerized so the real estate sector the rera act and all those would come under the computerization now this is a kind of centrally sponsored scheme it is started laid back in 88 89 with 100% financial assistance in the starting initial eight districts where it started as a pilot project now this has been revamped with nic taking part into it and we are trying to update all the copies of the records into a digital format the next is digital india land record modernization program now this is a kind of updation of the previous program that we have talked about and it talks about two things first is computerizing all the land records and secondly is strengthen up the revenue administration and update all the kind of land records that are existing in the system the next is bhumi project bhumi project the name as it suggests bhumi that means land so it's a project for online delivery of land records this has been a kind of state project again funded by government of india and government of karnataka so as you can see most of the developments or online projects that are coming up are in the state of karnataka so we had the khajane project that was for the online treasury we have the bhumi project that's for the online land records and so on so name of the project which state is collaborated with and what's the basic idea behind that project are some of the key aspects that you need to cover the next is uh, under the e governance that we have talked about we are trying to expand this concept of e governance to various municipalities so in order to improve the operational efficiencies as i said paying of the prof professional tax paying of the property tax uh paying of the traffic fines and all those could be uh streamlined under the e governance in the municipality so everything could be done through electronic means now public distribution system we already talked about in our classes on economics so it's providing a kind of uh, subsidized public uh, basically food grains or any other commodity to the people at a subsidized cost now this public distribution system takes place through the various fair pay, uh, fair price shops and now what we are trying to do is to computerize this public distribution system so as we know exactly wh what amount was provided to a particular ration shop what amount was dispatched from that ration shop in order to rule out any issues of corruption underlying those so fair uh, fair price shops could now be automated with this idea the next is national land records modernization program this project was again launched back in 88 89 the idea was to remove the flaws in updating and maintaining the land records cryptocurrency as we talked about this is one of the major important topics there are numerous forms of cryptocurrency that are present in the previous class we had talked about petro that was being released by venezuela uh, that has been released by venezuela as a cryptocurrency so cryptocurrency is basically a kind of digital or a virtual currency which you actually cannot hold in the hand but because it's in the digital format and it uh basically it has been in news because of the legality issues so certain countries have considered cryptocurrency as legal certain countries have not india is still on a kind of neutral stand for the same so you have the major cryptocurrencies that are here the most popular among them is the bitcoins and then you have the ethereum and the ripple so three of those are having the maximum market capital share as you can see now bitcoin we have already covered a separate class as we discussed previously very very important cover that carefully now there is no standard pricing for this this is considered to be a worldwide payment system the integrities of bitcoin we have discussed there and uh, uh, here is a kind of bitcoin legality map which shows which countries have a kind of legal stand for example in us and canada and european nation it's considered as a legal currency some of the countries like india then you have the countries of argentina which are still on a kind of neutral framework they are not still accepted the uh, bitcoin as a legal tender the next is bharat net now bharat net is providing internet connectivity to the rural areas by 2022 so that's our target what we keep in mind now this has an idea of providing uh, optic fiber connectivity to the rural infrastructure and the rural areas it initially started in 2012 there has been various phases uh, in which it has been worked around currently we are in the second phase and we aim to move to the third phase by next year 
The next is the various malwares. So malwares are basically the softwares that are written to harm the computing system. So there are various types of malwares. We have also covered a separate class on malware. Very, very important, especially for the candidates for net examination. So all the types of malware, the Trojanware, ransomware we have already covered. Let's say, for example, recently you had the Locky Ransom. So Locky Ransom was a virus, uh, was a malware where you had to pay in money to unlock your computers once it's affected by the Locky Ransom wire. So those are the kinds of things that we need to work around. So here is the link for the same. You can just go there and understand the whole topic on mal malware in detail. So Locky Ransom we already talked about. Similar to the Locky Ransom, you have Zep Copy, uh, and similar to that, you have Wanna Cry. So Wanna Cry basically traveled from one computer to another without the user interaction taking place. Next is we are also trying to digitize all the museum collections that are present. So when we talk about museum collections, we have the various paper inscriptions that have to be computerized or digitized and put into the uh, online database. So we have a national database of all art objects that would be created with the help of Archaeological Survey of India. Similarly, we have the first NIC CRT that has been launched. Now this has been set up by the National Informatics Center and it basically talks about predicting and preventing any kind of cyber crimes in India, uh, specifically on the government utilities. The next is the Ministry of uh, Electronics and Information Technology, which is no, also known as METI, has launched Cyber Surakshit Bharat Initiative. Now, this is a kind of uh, cyber security ecosystem that would be provided in India in line with the government's vision of uh, digital India. So, that's how we are trying to associate digital India e-governance with Cyber Surakshit Bharat. The next is the difference between Hackathon and Apathon. So, Hackathon is a... Uh, event where basically programmers gather and they try to code, uh, collaborate to code. And when we talk about Apathon, it's basically coding for an app. So that's the difference between the two. Uh, important terms have been in news recently. So you must know. Similarly, you have a Pisathon. This was a global conference on cyberspace in 2017, which was a kind of 36 hours challenge that took place and has been important. The next is Saposhi. Now, this is a new threat uh, that has been detected. It's a kind of uh, distri distributed denial of service attack. Besides Saposhi, we have two more that is Reaper and Mirai. So, these three are DDoS that is uh, distributed denial of service attacks and they can take place over the electronic devices and turn them into bots. So bots are basically the devices which ultimately becomes or turns into a malware. So Saposhi is very, very important. India is considered to be the third country which is most vulnerable to cyber attacks or cyber crimes after United States and China. So ranking is again important. So make sure uh, you cover those carefully. The next is Pratyush. Now Pratyush is India's fastest supercomputer that has been released. It is the first multi petaflop computer and Pratyush the name means sun. So it basically says we are trying to derive energy from the sun. So one petaflop is basically a million billion floating point uh, operations that could be performed per second. So it would be a real supercomputer with a very high speed. So it has two stations where it has been uh, working around. So one is Pune and other is Noida. So in the Noida it's basically with the weather department or the weather forecasting department. India has joined the 5G network, so that's again an important uh, initiative by part of India. In line with that, we have developed the first 5G lab. It is in the name of MIMO, that is Multiple Input, Multiple Output Lab. And this has been set up in IIT Delhi, but has been established by Bharti School of Telecommunication. So very important to note, the lab has not been established by IIT Delhi, but by Bharti School of Telecommunication and Management in IIT Delhi. So that's the first 5G lab to be established in any educational institute in India. So 5G as we all know is a kind of wireless technology next to the 4G and it is based on third generation partnership projects. The Bellon 5G01 uh, is a kind of chipset that has been developed by Huawei. Uh, Huawei is a Chinese company, Chinese firm, and it's the first uh, first 5G chip that has been developed by Huawei uh, in China. So that's again important, the name of it. So that is Bellon 5G01. 
The next is we have tried to develop tetrahertz transmission for data that could travel 10 times faster than 5G even. So still we are on the 5G now we are talking about uh, basically terahertz. So we are talking about the terahertz transmitters which can even be uh, capable of transmitting at 10 times faster than 5G. Similarly we have two more concepts Li-Fi, Wi-Fi and iBeacon which we have talked about in a separate lecture. So that would be live shortly. So you can refer Li-Fi as well. So that's basically running of the internet through lights or LED. So those are the next generation technologies that we talk about. Very interesting. You must be familiar with those. The next is Mihir. Now it's again a high speed computing uh, facility that is being present. Now this Mihir basically works with weather, weather forecasting again similar to the weather forecasting that we had talked about before that was uh, with the Pune and the Noida faculty. So Mihir is again a kind of computing facility for weather forecasting. The next is we have six proposals for high-tech public transportation. Now what does these six proposals include? Those are important. So first is Hyperloop. We already talked about the Hyperloop between Vijaywada and Amravati and the next being proposed by Virgin Group between Bombay and Pune which would reduce the distance from uh, 3 hours to 20 minutes. The next is Metrinos. Those are the idea of driverless cars. Then you have pot taxis. Those would be cable cars that could carry 4 to 6 persons at a time. You have Stadler buses, those are kind of Swiss rail company uh, settings which would bring in energy efficient coaches for India. Freight railroad <coughs> which would have elevated uh, corridors along the railway lines and finally is hybrid bus which would use the combustion as well as the electric engines. The next is we are trying to inaugurate a fiber grid project for Andhra Pradesh. Again, one of the major initiatives. So as you can see, Andhra Pradesh, Telangana, Karnataka, some of the states where you have most of the cyber developments or digital developments that have taken place. So make sure <coughs> you cover those completely. Uh, now this would help in providing internet, uh, television and telephone services to nearly 1 lakh people at a speed of 15 Mbps or more. Rajasthan has become the first state to provide Hindi email IDs uh, and those would be in the Devanagari script. This has been uh, one of the uh, first efforts by any state in the country and it would have its Unicode standards to provide this uh, email IDs in Hindi. The next is big data. Now when we talk about big data, a very important question that comes up is big data is based on uh, 5V, uh, 5 uh, 5R, 5X, 5Z. So that's a question for you. Now just put in the answers in the comment box. What do you think? Uh, what it is actually based on? So big data, big analytics are some of the terms that you commonly, data analytics are some of the terms that you commonly come across. So big data basically means when you have ample of the data with you and you try to segregate it, manage it in certain fashion. So under this, we I don't have any answers yet. So it's based on the technique of 5V. So 5V basically talks about five things. First is the volume it's catering to, the variety it's catering to, the velocity at which you have the data that comes in and goes out. The two new terms that have been added recently are again important. Those are the value and the veracity. So these five become the five V's of the big data. Very, very important. So just cover those carefully and under this big data technology we are trying to use artificial intelligence, machine learning and we are also trying to work around the idea of smart cities. So the next is the section on geography. So with this we cover the concepts on computers moving on to geography. First is the geographical indication status. Now government has come up with a brand that is a gift for GI campaign for registering the various geographical indication specialties in India and hashtag let's talk IP. Now some of the registered geographical indications are the tea from Darjeeling, laddus from Tripu, uh, Tirupati, paintings from Kangra, oranges from Nagpur and Pashmina from Kashmir. The next is new Senek schools have come up. Now these are in line with uh, VK Krishna Menon who was the defense minister of India and he started the concept of Senek schools in India. So far there are 20, 26 Senek schools in India. They basically prepare students for entry into Indian Naval Academy and National Defense Academy Khadagwasla. The next is uh, one important discovery that took place recently was a piece of Canada has been struck off from the part of Australia and it was basically uh, from the part of US 
coming into or joining into Australia in the region of Georgetown. So the peace of Canada, which separated from the American man mainland, joined the parts of Australia and it was the region of Georgetown where it joined and this has been one of the recent discoveries. Now this has been brought about by the Earth's first supercontinent that's Nuna that has come into way. So we are talking more about Nuna. Uh, this would be important for geography optional candidates who will be covering that separately in a separate lecture. Now what is CVI? Uh, we believe that the coastline is eroding at a very fast pace. Gujarat is considered to have the longest coastline in India and it's been eroded at a uh, at a rate of around 35 uh, percent has been eroded so that's the pace of erosion of the coastline so working around the high tides low tides and the methods through which we could control the coastal erosion are some of the important parameters that we should work around the next is what is lean period and flush period so these two terms are usually used for with milk production recently they were in news because in goa there was a crisis of milk production so what is flush period flush period is the period where you have ample of uh, uh, basically the supply that could be seen now uh, ample supply of milk production that could be seen. The next is the lean period where the supply is less. So lean period usually varies from April to November and flush period varies from December to March. Malpelo plate is the 57th new microplate that has been discovered. So these are kind of tectonic plates. When we talk about tectonic plates in the class on plate tectonics, we have discussed how we believe that the creation of the various continents uh, and the landforms on the earth is governed by the plate uh, collisions. So you have the various divergence and uh, convergence that takes place. So three types of uh, features, the fold features that could occur. And based on that, you have the tectonic activities or the plate movement that is governed. And this is one of the new plates that has been discovered near the coast of South America in Ukidor. The next is uh, the naming of the cyclone and cyclone Oki. So we have already covered the naming of the cyclone in detail. Very important topic for your prelims examination. Uh, so the recent cyclones that have been in news. Now Nagoya protocol and sets already we have covered in our class on environment. So all the lectures on environment, all the conventions so far are important. Nagoya is important because Nagoya talks about the biosafety rules. Then you have sets which is important that talks about the endangered species. So some of these are really, really important. Don't miss those. Now we have already talked about creating new urea uh, units in India. This would decline the, the dependence on the imports of urea from foreign country. And urea is basically one of the primary requirements in the fertilizer industry in India. So we have some of the plants that are being revived. So you have the Ramagudam, Sindari, Gorakhpur and Talchar units of the uh, Fertilizer Corporation of India Limited and Baruni unit of Hindustan Fertilizers. So those are being revamped. The next is Maharashtra government has approved a scheme which is Nanaji Deshmukh Krishi Sanjeevni Yojana. As the name says, it's basically trying to promote the climate resilient crops. So all the climate resilient crops would be there and we would try to uh, promote those. So uh, those are the things that we need to consider here. The next is gore seed. Now this is the first agri commodity that has come into options and uh, you have the NCDX where it has been registered and it would be the first liquid uh, contracts that would be available on an exchange platform. The next is we are working for a coconut development board. Now why coconut development is important in line of the climate change when we talk about we say the all the crops would be affected by the certain fluctuations that are occurring in the climatic conditions. However, despite of these, coconut is one of the crops where we have seen an increase in the productivity. For all other crops, we have registered a decline in the productivity. So therefore, uh, coconut development, coconut production becomes important in India. We also have a coconut development board for the same. And uh, India is the world's third largest producer of coconut. The next is 2018 has been declared as national year of millets in India and we have proposed the same to United Nations for declaring it as an international year of millets. The next is we have the various loan projects that are coming up for Tamil Nadu irrigation services mainly for modernizing the irrigation. 
LOP, very very important, that is letter of permit. Now what is it? So Indian fishermen are now allowed to buy the used uh, vessels from Taiwan and Thailand and get them registered in India. So once they are registered in India, they, they can use it for boating purposes. They would be allowed for a kind of three year deferred payment that could take place at 10% of the value of the vessel that would be required. And uh, they would have to make a kind of proof of payment for the same for uh, rupees 10,000 to the ministry and with that you can ensure that they can use those vessels in the Indian water. Now India is one of the second largest fish producing country in the world. As we said, uh, ocean economy is one of the major economies but now our focus is to move from ocean economy to blue economy which is much more sustainable in nature. So blue economy we have already talked about in a separate lecture. Now this blue economy is separate from blue revolution and a blue, blue revolution we talk about increasing the production activity in terms of fishing. So we are under blue revolution we are only talking about fishing as one of the activities. Under blue economy we talk about all the activities from the ocean in a sustainable way and under ocean economy we talk about all the economies in the ocean. Uh, it need not to be sustainable but there would be kind of exploitation from the ocean resources. The next is we are trying to use artificial intelligence in the healthcare sector, in the agricultural sector for the development so that we can have weather, better weather predictions, we can have better cropping systems that could come up. So Rickset and Andhra Pradesh government has started together with a kind of artificial intelligence project. Similarly, in the healthcare sector, we are trying to detect the colorectal cancer with the help of artificial intelligence. We are working on a national mission on bo bovine productivity, uh, enhancing the production. Uh, this is again in line with the Rashtriya Gokul mission and you are using basically the embryo transfer technology uh, for breeding stations. Now this is again a very very important topic for your general studies, animal husbandry and poultry section, students from those optionals, also from the student, uh, also for the students from agriculture and geography optionals. The next is, so here are some of the components that we are talking about regarding these. The next is the production of sugar. The first hybrid clone species was developed for the subtropical climate. It was launched back in 1918 and since then we are working on uh, the production of sugarcane. India is the second largest producer of sugarcane in the uh, world. We have Maharashtra which is the largest producer followed by, uh, sorry Uttar Pradesh which is the largest producer followed by Maharashtra and Tamil Nadu. So that's the series of production across the states in India. Then you have Trifid. Now Trifid is basically the Tribal Cooperative Marketing uh, Development Federation. Now this federation has recently celebrated the World Honey Bee Day. So we are trying to bring in more tribals, bringing in honey production, so apiary. Similarly, we are try trying to move towards sweet revolution. That's again important. So all those are very, very important to cover. Make sure that you don't miss those. The next is Farmer Zone Agriculture, Smart Agriculture Conclave has taken place recently. This, is, has been, this has been in the name of Farmer Zone. This is a kind of open source data platform for producing smart agriculture or climate resilient agriculture in certain fashion and benefiting the small farmers and the marginal farmers for the benefit of them. The next is horticulture. So under horticulture production, we have talked about Hortinet app. That is one of the important apps. And we have recorded certain increase in the production in fruits, vegetables, spices, plantation crops, and so on. So all those are important. Hortinet is basically a kind of inter integrated system for providing internet-based electronic services for uh, horticulture, for fruit culture, and registration of the farmers. So those are some of the important efforts there. The next is BRICS ARP. This is the BRICS arm for the agricultural research platform. So all the BRICS nation, the Brazil, Russia, India, China and Sri Lanka together would have a kind of research platform where agricultural developments could be shared across the nations. Similarly, we have Agri Udan. Now make sure you don't confuse it with the two Udan schemes that we have mentioned. So this Agri Udan, one Udan was for the minority uh, students for the scholarship. The next Udan is Ude Desh Ka Am Nagrik. So one has two A, other has one A. And here you have Agri Udan that's basically uh, accelerating the production of food and agribusiness in India. 
the next is we are coming up for draft regulations for organic food products and that's again important we are moving towards uh, paramparagrat krishi vikas yojana so with that we are focusing on organic farming uh, using less of synthetic or chemical fertilizers so organic products and organic uh, products are now basically uh, popular in india the next is we are trying to integrate cold chain and value addition now what is the idea we are saying that we need to double the farmers income by 2022 so when we are trying to double the farmers in, uh, income by 2022 what would happen is uh, we need to bring in agriculture along with agricultural allied activities so for example integrated cold chain would be one of the good examples then all the value addition services rather than selling off the lemons you could sell a lemon pickle so that's the way of value addition infrastructure that we talk about so when we are talking about value addition you are trying to sell in pickle into the market so you are trying to bring in uh, let's say preservatives into it so irradiation is one of the techniques through which you could do preservation so those are some of the things that we focus on project chaman very very important that's for the horticulture sector increasing the farmers income and development of the horticulture and allied activities in india the next is we are trying to have a joint project with jordan and in india it would be the sahara project uh, sahara forest project sorry the idea is basically to turn the sand dune areas into a forest area so turning down all the desert area into a forest area is our objective and we are working in line with jordan so we are trying to produce food using sun and the sea water so that's one of the ideas that we work around here so with this we cover most of the topics that have been important for your uh, computers as well as your uh, uh, geography section we'll be coming up with more important classes next uh, friday we would have uh, next wednesday and friday we would have further expected question series in while if you if we find any other important topics for your prelims we would be definitely covering those so stay tuned don't miss up our series till the 3rd of june we'll be bringing in very very important topics for you have a good